I see more soft seating. Okay. I see more sofa style seating in, uh, in, wow. in restaurants. Uh, communal, you know, a lot of communal things. I mean, I'm sure you, you know what, uh, what I'm talking about. A uh, lot of places are asking for, uh, you know, how do we bring more people together? And I always wonder if that's a product of, uh, of the internet splitting people up. I see. You know what I mean? Good afternoon, everybody. We have uh, Roger Farage in the house. Hello. Farage is a rock star behind Farage Upholstery and Furniture, and um, happy to have him here. He's also a member of the Edmonton Executive Association with us. Uh, fine family man, and what I would consider uh, an awesome friend outside of work, as we all have really strong uh, friendships with our, uh, our, our um, co-workers and people we network with and people we associate with at work. But Roger and I take it outside of uh, work yeah. lots, yeah. all the way to Sylvan, Calgary, wherever we go. Yeah. And Vegas. this year, Vegas and, uh, sorry, this year, Oilers. Oh, yeah. Vegas, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, Vegas, you got to go to the HD show. <laughs> so I'm excited well, to have you here, man. Thank thanks you. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. And the goal is to discuss uh, your success, your story, mm -hmm. uh, your BHAG, your vision for the future of hospitality. And, of course, what I think our viewers want is what's your perspective, because every single one that we get sitting in the hot seat here has mm -hmm. got their own perspective so you know we've tried everything from uh, a larry we've tried everything from a um, governor brown david governor brown uh we tried adam once and now you so everybody has their perspective on hospitality and mm -hmm. where it's gone where it is how COVID's affected etc so um perhaps we can start off with the brand the name mm -hmm. farage uh tell our viewers what does Farage do and what are you known for? Well, it's um, Farage Furniture and Upholstery. Um, we do upholstery and custom furniture manufacturing. Together? Together. Awesome. Yeah, so we can build, uh, you know, custom stools, chairs, benches, uh, a lot of stuff that you've designed, we've built. Uh, my father started the business, 1986. 86? 86. Holy smokes. Yeah. I was four years old. That would be 20, and, uh, 30, so be 30, 35 years? 35, yeah. Oh, you got to make 30, a sticker. 36 years, yeah. Good for you. So, yeah, That's it's, awesome. uh, it's been awesome. So I, I, I officially took over in uh, 2005. Yeah. So I, I, I became the, the owner, and I was still going to school at the same time. And, um, yeah, with custom furniture and upholstery. Wonderful. And based in Edmonton, or do you have Calgary office too? Based in Edmonton, yeah. So nothing yet in Calgary. But I find your product everywhere. Like on our projects, yeah. you're, I mean, I'm not going to say cross Canada, but I know for a fact you can ship your product. I know oh, yeah. upholstery is also custom, so can you actually do, and do you do our stuff in Toronto or other cities, or do you have people that help you across Canada? Yeah, we can, we have customers in Montreal, Thunder Bay, uh, in Ontario, like uh, so no problems. in Toronto, no problems, yeah. Wow. We have people in, uh, we just did a job in California, actually. So we just... Uh, of all places. Yeah, we can, yeah, we could, you know, ship North America wide, so that's good. That's really good. Yeah. All out of each here. Yes. For you, man. Yes. No. Uh, I mean, we got a lot of customers in Calgary, um, so yeah. But just the one office. Yeah. Nice. And then, where did this all begin? Obviously, you said 2005 is when you took over or joined your father's company. Mm -hmm. uh, what triggered you to get into upholstery? Because clearly, that's not a like it's not even at Nate. You've told me before that that's a really, really specialized profession. So, what got you into upholstery yourself? Me, I got into upholstery because it complements furniture very nice. well, right? Yeah. In order to make the furniture, you get upholstered. So upholstery came from when we started making booths. Oh, wow. So we started in house. In house. At Farage, okay. Yeah. So we started that uh, about 10 years after uh, my dad started, so yeah. maybe in the mid 90s somewhere. And, and that's part of, of upholstery. So when people hmm. have an existing you know, booth structure, we can reupholster it for them. And then, you know, when you're doing that, uh, people bring lazy boys, they yeah. bring... Um, non-commercial stuff. Non-commercial stuff as well. Hmm. Um, centerpieces for the restaurants. That kind and what's of the share today? Like, what's your split in the market? Like, are you, your sales are what, in furniture versus upholstery? Is it 50-50 or how do you find it? it yeah, it's 50-50, but... Is it? um, wow. It's it's different, like almost on a yearly basis, it changes. Okay. And so, um, you know, a lot of the stuff that we have 
Uh, we manufacture it, of course, and then some of the stuff that we have, we, we bring it in and resell it. And that kind of thing, it's, you know, sometimes, some months there's busier for, for manufacturing and some months are not. Okay. So, but they both complement each other. You know, you you can't be in the furniture game and not do tables, for example. Or, I see. Or so not you got the whole gamut. Yeah, yeah, you have to do and one And when I'm shop. at your shop, sometimes I see old chairs that you're reupholstering. Yeah. And we're not talking, uh, you know, a couple of lazy boys. I see you reupholstering complete casinos. Is there value in saving that furniture and not putting it in the landfill? Like, how many of your clients are actually reusing old product and not chucking it? Um, it it's happening, like, it, it's still very popular. Okay. It's happening, like, in terms of commercial, if you have a simple product, a simple chair, it's often more, it makes more economical sense to replace it. Okay. If you have something with lots of upholstery, and it's a big, like a tub chair or whatever, it makes more sense to reupholster it. So then it depends on how much upholstery on it. How do yeah, you know that? Yeah, it depends, yeah. And if it's and if it's intricate, if it's simple, um, that sort of thing. Like Good, so you're a one-stop shop for that. Yeah. Um, I know CK Design would design a restaurant and then you jump in to do everything from the custom bench, mm -hmm. custom diner, custom U-booth, all the way to the tabletop, the table base, uh, we got you doing the chairs, bar chairs, stools, mm -hmm. uh, bar stools, et cetera. So you're a one-stop shop. Anything else that you provide our clients that um, I'm missing? No, I think that's it. You had the whole gamut of furniture. Yeah, the whole gamut of furniture. That's Table amazing. Bases. We one stop new, shop. Yeah, the new uh, the new flat technology. Oh, I know. You do also my patios and patio furniture. I forgot well. all about the patios. Yeah. We do. Uh, we have a 34 day. Patio season in Edmonton, maybe that's why I forgot. 34, eight. Yeah, that's my calculation. That's in-house. Uh, we have like um, just, yeah, it's heavy-duty calculator. We calculate which days I can sit on the patio with a cold beer, mm -hmm. and I'm down to 34 days. So Interesting. I apologize to you for uh, only <laughs> using your furniture 34 days a year. But uh, same happens at my patio at home. Yeah. Not, I'm not a friend of sitting out in the cold. So you're known and well-known uh, right across Western Canada, I'd say. Uh, you do chains, non-chains, people take your product right across. Um, how did this become, like, like how did you take something in 2005 and 2006, mm -hmm. uh, Farage Furniture, like what was the, the methodology behind your expansion and what was the trick and what's the secret to that success? How did you get so well-known so fast? Well. You know, being around since 86, you develop a reputation for yeah. yourself, you develop a name. Um, and then after that, it's it's just, you're still in the industry mm -hmm. and you're you're thinking of ways to get better and thinking of ways to be the true, you know, one-stop shop. And so, you know, that's what it, that's what it takes, uh, innovation, creativity. When we work with, with good designers like yourself, like it's, it, it makes our job a little bit easier actually. Okay. Because um, Cause not every project has a design lead on it. No. You, you become a design lead sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. 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 And, um, you know, when we're working with stuff with, with people like yourself, it's, it's, it's very easy because you guys create the vision and you say, how can we get this uh, at the restaurant or how okay. can we put this into production? Which is, uh, which is actually one of my favorite parts of the business is the challenges in creating something that we've never created before. Nice. I'll get my team to send you one of those four liter Costco uh, Tylenol bins for when you're not working with us, uh, just so you can pop a few pills and then, okay. uh, you know, get rid of your headaches. As yeah. I can see uh, for sure uh, that, you know, a majority, I would say a majority of restaurants don't use designers mm -hmm. and not just our firm. Um, you know, they try to wing it themselves. Uh, the Home Depot concepts as we call them, mm -hmm. but I can see it being a headache for you because at some point now your job is not just providing the furniture, it's actually designing it. It is. And yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, yeah. I'll that's make sure that you true. get that four liter uh, pail of it. <laughs> okay. Uh, of Tylenol. Maybe, maybe two. <laughs> yeah, maybe. maybe two. Maybe there's a two for one. Yeah, no, I get, I get asked questions all the time about colors, about uh, layouts. Layouts I'm good with. Um, but it's like, you know, what design should I put in here? You know what I mean? When I would like to just, you know, I, I'm not saying I don't like to do the design. I like it a lot, but I, I really like furniture manufacturing. Okay. And that's what I prefer to stick to. But you can't, you can't be, 
you know, you can't avoid that, that problem because you kind of have to be a designer as well. Ah, so you got to combine both. And I know from your brand new showroom on 149, yeah. you've gone ahead and built not just a showroom of furniture, which our viewers should visit soon. Um, you got also a sample, a mm -hmm. full sample room, mm -hmm. which I feel looks like my office because you got everything in there on mm -hmm. the upholstery side. But it also means to me that it shows me how many clients come straight to you mm -hmm. to whip up a restaurant with their contractor and skip the design community. Mm -hmm. But I think that's a need. I think there is a need for that market and I like the fact that you're, uh, you're there for the cl that client, right? Yeah, yeah, you kind of have to be design driven because yeah. that's what it's, you know, it's all about the design, right? That's amazing. Poor, poor design, the, you know, the restaurant. I mean. <laughs> and there's always going to be that client. I don't think we can uh, yeah. shake it. I know, um, yeah, there's a market for everyone, and mm -hmm. I like that about the Edmonton market. And generally, I think all of Alberta has that. There's rural Alberta, and then there's the big cities. I know I, I've been working with you before I launched my brand. So I launched CK Design in 2008, so I met you probably in the six, 2006-ish. Mm -hmm. uh, would you mind sharing with uh, our viewers at home here uh, some of your hacks, some of your trade secrets? Uh, what has worked for you, what hasn't worked for you in the world of upholstery and custom furniture? So some hacks, like so, so we, use, we use furniture to optimize the seating in the space. So ah. how, does, how does a customer maximize their layout and get the best, uh, the most seats in their, in their restaurant? Um, we also, you know, use a firm foam so that uh, it, it's, it lasts longer. A softer foam, while it might be a little bit more comfortable, uh, it might not last as long. So, so the foam lasts or does it actually affect the upholstery? That's does. an interesting hack. It does. If Both. You, if you have a really thick foam and it's, um, it's, a, it's a not, a, not a firm grade, uh, it'll wear faster in more places You're kidding. than one. No. So I use medium density on my backs yep. and high density on the seat. Perfect. That's the way to do it. That's the way to do so it. So you're saying if we do and medium on the seat, the hack there is the life yeah. expectancy of that product. Yeah, but it depends on the thickness. I of never that, thought of that on that on that foam. So okay. if you're using a six inch thick foam, um, if you use a dense one, that's yeah. going to be too hard for people to sit on. If you're using a soft foam, it's going to you know six inches. The thicker it is, well, think of it. The the the, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Nice. So it'll wear faster in more places than one, and it'll, it'll create a gap between the vinyl and, and the foam. So it'll, with that gap, the, the, the fabric will wrinkle, and yeah. it'll start to crack. Yeah, even if it's vinyl, it wrinkles. Yes. Uh, the other hack would be, uh, I know we've had our challenges, you and I, on projects on the type of vinyl. Mm -hmm. So we've mm -hmm. slowly moved away from every only type of vinyl thing, yeah. and only focused on, on PVC. PVC. Right? Yeah. That's a great hack for all our viewers at home. I think yeah. you'll see it in, in like I got that over 1600 restaurants completed. So I go back to my restaurants and I see the vinyl fall apart and it's because we moved away from 100% PVCs mm -hmm. and now we slowly move back to PVCs. Yeah. Maybe share with everybody how that blew up in my face, our client's face and what are we doing to mediate that now and well yeah well remedy it it, it uh, blew up in my face as well too so. yeah because you don't make the vinyl. i don't make the vinyl either no no see, see polyurethane will break down with something as, as simple as water wow so if a server is 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 you know cleaning a bench or whatever and he or she doesn't dry it which none of them do right that takes time that water will penetrate and you'll start to it'll start to peel so we need a we need a uh, a cordless dyson did you guys hear that a dyson a cordless dyson uh uh Silent, right? Yeah. Stuff. Yeah, just walk around and blow dry all the seats. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, exactly. No, that's never going to happen. <laughs> so then go to PVC, right? Go to PVC vinyl, yeah. And, and then, skip the dryer. Yeah. And okay. then PVC, as long as it's properly maintained, it'll, it could last years. Oh, wow. And, and nowadays... Uh, Music to my ears. My clients, for sure, they don't want to call me every time their seats fall apart. Of course. And I don't want to get that call either. You don't want that call either. Because, <laughs> again, we don't make the vinyl, but we're only no. as good as the vinyl we're using. And then I think... Another hack that you and I have discovered is we've had troubles with our table bases. Mm -hmm. Tell me how you upped your table base game and what are you using? What are you recommending to our clients? We're using a new product called uh, Flat Technology. Which Flat's the brand. Flat's the wow. brand. And it has a, uh, it has a hydraulic stabilizer mm -hmm. in the bottom of the, of the table base. 
and that prevents the tabletop from ever being wobbly. So there's no glide that you have to constantly adjust. Um, you know, customers will often move the table to yep. in, in the restaurant themselves. The second they do that, it, it becomes wobbly again. But with, with flat technology, um, it'll, it'll be always stable and it's, it adjusts itself. So when you bring two tables together, they're often misaligned. You can lift up on one or press down on the other. I love that idea. It'll be flat, yeah. It was a, it's a very good product. The company's seeing a lot of success right now, so um, it's, it's definitely changing. The so game. those are the, some of the hacks. I was gonna touch on another hack that I think you've, you've shared with me and I've implemented into my restaurants is probably um, the need for the structure. So growing up in the restaurant business, I always, considered the booth as being somewhere where I could hide product. Mm -hmm. And a lot of restaurants hide files, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah, in these booths. Mm -hmm. Are you still doing that? Has the booth changed itself differently or what's changed in that business? No. Is I mean, plywood OSB? Like what are we using? What should we be using? We're using plywood. Plywood, uh, OS, not OSB. No, OSB is not really structurally sound. Oh, okay. Um, and, and no cardboard, no hardboard, um, all plywood and um, <clears throat> You asked about the... Uh, like the oh, storage, the, the, the are we storage, able to yeah. pop the seat anymore? Yes, you can still pop okay. the seat. So you're still we, doing that? We sometimes have people asking me, I want the bench to store. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what, you know, the height. So they it. definitely want it to want store. It to store. Well, yeah, oh, wow. We've had flip top lids on the seat, uh, wow. done that. Uh, I've I've been asked to, to reupholster some, some furniture. I, I go in there, I pop in the seat, and I see pots and pans and spices and oils and everything. Everything. So, so it works well. Yeah. So yeah, that's still uh, a, little, uh, a bit of a hack. And with real estate getting so expensive, who knows what's next, right? Those are true. great spots to hide real estate. Uh, that's true. Like to double up on the real estate. Right? Yeah. I don't yeah. mind that idea at all. Maybe bar height benches um, will store even more stuff in there. So maybe that'll be the next one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that could be a really good idea. Now, talking about real estate and bums in the seats and how things have changed, COVID shows up mm -hmm. March 2020. Mm -hmm. um, Tell me a little bit about that. I guess the question is, what did you do? What did Farage do differently to survive that hump in the road and the hump in your growth? And what was smart? What did you learn from it? And what have you implemented since because of this pandemic? Mm, so COVID was um, <clears throat> a, a very bad thing for everybody. Okay. Um, now, we had, we had a lot of jobs on the go in March, we were able to weather the storm, and uh, we weren't affected that like much that by uh, by COVID because um, it was it was a mixed bag. So we had we had people canceling jobs, postponing them. Canceling. Oh, we wow. had people come to their office in a rush and say, "This is the best time to to renovate my furniture or re refresh." So full mixed bag. Let's yeah, full mixed bag, and uh, because we we kind of branched off a year and a half before COVID to offices and and more uh, and more industrial commercial work, mm -hmm. it was it was okay. Like we were thankful we didn't have to lay anybody off. Because you weren't 100% hospitality at that point. Because yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, we still are most hospitality right now, uh, but we, we also do offices and uh, and schools and stuff like that too. Yes, yeah, so you branched so, out beyond that. Yeah, so so COVID, you know, it, we, we were able to, uh, to shelter that uh, well. We were lucky mm -hmm. that we didn't have to lay anybody off. And um, you know, there's there's supply chain issues, there's uh, shipping issues. So that's affected you since COVID. Since and more recently, obviously, a lot of our um, yeah our kitchen suppliers, our uh, lighting guys, like everybody's seeing a, a hiccup right now. The past three four months, you're seeing that in your furniture and furniture table bases, or not as much. Uh, we're seeing it in the materials. Materials. So even vinyl. Vinyl foam, especially. Wood. Why? Because it's all offshore. No, it's not all offshore, mm -hmm. um, but the chemicals that they buy for foam to, yeah. to produce it comes from uh, from North America and whatnot. Okay. So, um, and there's all there's supply chain issues, there's freight oh, wow. problems, delays. Uh, what's interesting though is we had uh, a significant increase in the co in the calls for patio furniture. Really? Last, yeah. Oh, due to the fact that COVID is forcing us to drink and eat outside. Outside. I like yeah. that. Yeah, and so that uh, that you know. Just that alone caused us to bring on board more suppliers okay. 
and uh, patio furniture. Patio furniture. Which you're not making in Edmonton. You're just you're not even upholstering that. It's just outdoor stuff. We upholster some of it. Okay. You know what I mean? We I mean we did some custom pieces for patio furniture. Because you're doing benches for us outdoor. Yeah. So we yeah. can use your product outdoor. Yeah. yeah. Like at like at Hearts actually we That's did right. uh, uh, that long uh, metal bench. But yeah, no, th there's um, most of the patio furniture comes from our district our uh, suppliers. Okay. And um, you know we got a lot of calls for those. And it forced us to get more uh, expander product lines, which which worked out really well for us. Very good. Have you seen a change in the product? We find it in our industry magazines that there's new vinyls, new surfaces specifically made and or uh, invented uh, for COVID and germ free. Are you seeing that creep into your business? Are you seeing? germ killing vinyls and germ killing surfaces or not yet in the Edmonton market? Well, I mean, yeah, COVID really, um, you know, you get a lot of questions about that. Yeah. Um, we use this, uh, there's this coating called Endurapel, uh, that stuff, you know, it prevents anything from seeping through the fabric. Okay. It lasts the life of the fabric and it's, you know, stain resistant. And that's on a fabric, not on upholstery. On, Sorry, on not on a vinyl. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. on a fabric, yeah. Good to know. And, and vinyl doesn't really absorb, Okay. but um, uh, anything that catches it, you can just easily wipe it away. And it's good to go. Yeah. I like that idea. I like and I like how you guys have adjusted to, like you're able and nimble enough to understand where your clients are going because uh, our clients had a bit of a slowdown with COVID. Mm -hmm. Your clients are the same. Mm -hmm. So you're quickly able to adapt and provide them with a product, which in your case equals patio. Uh, as our dining rooms were shut down, mm -hmm. uh, we were fortunate enough to get a lot of that uh, patio work. Uh, we we're also able to get a lot of new work from chains mm -hmm. that specialized in the home away or home meal replacement food. So not just um, so not the dining clientele, mm -hmm. but a QSR, a fast food, uh, or a ghost kitchen. That type of market still kept us busy, and we're happy for that. Yeah, that's. Uh that's good. Yeah. No, it's anytime you can and like, you know, keep busy while well in this big pandemic, it's it's a very good plus. Like and now that we've made it well, we're not out of it. No. But we see the light finally. I shared with you earlier in the green room that we have seen a significant uptick on the phone. Mm -hmm. More and more people are taking some of these vacant spaces. Other restaurants are looking at new spaces, so raw. Um, from your unique perspective, because you have your own, I have mine. Uh, what does this, you know, what does the future hold for the upholstery and furniture market post COVID? What do you mm -hmm. see, and what can uh, what can we learn from your insight and your perspective? I don't think upholstery will go away. Okay. I think. Um, because more people prefer a soft seat than a hard seat. They do, eh? Yeah. On chairs? On chairs. Or, or booths benches, or everything? Everything, I didn't yeah. know that. Okay. Because, um, I mean, like, there we, we do sell stuff, uh, you know, just like this with, with just metal, wood. But, you know, more more places prefer the soft seating. Even in and quick food, like QSR? Uh, QSR is a little bit, uh, little bit different. I, I would say... They, I don't think most of them go for the the plastic or okay. the, the steel seat, but I I think that uh, they take that market a little bit more. Like they they they, they buy that stuff more That's right. than than uh, a regular uh, restaurant, like a full service restaurant. I see upholstery. Um, I see more soft seating. Okay. I see more sofa style seating in uh, in, wow. in restaurants. Uh, communal. You know, a lot of communal things. I mean, I'm sure you, you know what uh, what I'm talking about. Uh, a lot of places are asking for, uh, you know, how do we bring more people together? And I always wonder if that's a product of uh, of the internet splitting people up. I see. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's good to know that you see that coming down. Is there, um, is there a change in the market for uh, what we saw during COVID? And I'll touch on it. So in the design world we noticed that uh, the intent to separate the seating with plexiglass screens mm -hmm. was kind of key to keep restaurants open during COVID, mm -hmm. Alberta health regulations. The easiest type of restaurants to split and put screens on were my restaurants with diner booths, so where you slide in four tops, six tops, two tops. Did you see that uptick in your business? In other words, do you see more coming on board or do you think it's too early to see restaurants adapt 
their restaurant seating layout for future pandemics? I think the new builds yeah. will will adapt. They will go that way. I, I, you know, not they might not go full all, like full blast that way. Uh, I think that has something to do with uh, the regulations, okay. the uh, you know Alberta Health and uh, permits and whatnot. But I don't think it's it's going to kill the uh, you know the booth seating or anything like that. I think it's it'll still like I mean booths already create separation, right? When you're going back to back, you can put a wall between. Or, or just some caps and further separate them apart. So there's still separation. I think the whole plexiglass thing, uh, they, they knew about, they didn't know much about it, but it was it was early in the game. And so that's why they chose to separate them. But they're not here to stay. You think plexi is, no, did you jump into that game at all? Or is no, blind? You I weren't, eh? No, I got a lot of calls for it. Yeah, because you look like the right guy to do it. Yeah, but. Uh, you stayed away. Yeah, I stayed away. We were so hopefully they're done. They're not going to be part, like I haven't implemented them into my design. I've just implemented uh, plexi friendly or, or pandemic friendly layouts. Mm -hmm. But definitely, I don't see any clients asking me to design plexiglass into the design anymore. Yeah, like w with our booths, you can temp. still you can still put plexiglass okay. on them. You can screw it right into it. You can let it hang on them. There's no you can still do that. I just don't see it becoming a focal point at okay. all or anything like that. So no remnants from that. That's good to know because I think, generally speaking, uh, our our viewers want to know what's changed and what will what's here to stay. Mm -hmm. And I would tell you that um, I personally feel that. Uh, the mask will maybe outlast the plexi. I really feel oh, the yeah. plexi is, um, it's a stress to the restaurateur, a lot of work to keep going, a lot of mm -hmm. a lot of work to have them hanging in the restaurants or mm -hmm. between the booths or between the tables. And uh, yeah, a little bit of hassle and not cheap. So we did, we invested thousands and millions of dollars into this plexi. Uh, sadly, we'll see it go yeah. landfill wise, right? Yeah. That's um, cool. What is, uh, we talked a little bit about f what Farage does and the legacy of the brand and what your dad started. So we know it's been around since 90... 86. 86, yeah. wow. What does the next 10 years look like? Have you kind of ironed that out? What's your BHAG and what's the goal and where does this runway take you? Where will we see Farage in other cities? Or do you think out of Edmonton you can expand the brand and expand the... I guess the, the services that Farage Furniture and Upholstery can provide us. Well, you know, ten years, I, I, I see, I see more of a need for furniture and upholstery. I see uh, moving forward. Moving forward. So yeah. an increase. Yeah. Oh, acts. I do. I, I see more soft seating in, in restaurants. People are always looking for ways to, uh, you know, to avoid the standard chair. Okay. Um, like we talked earlier about communal seating. I see a lot of that coming into play. Um, hmm. I know, you know, Europe, I mean, I'm sure, I think Adam touched on this, and Europe is ahead of, of us 10, 15 years. Even in seating, you think? Oh, yeah, oh, even wow. in seating, yeah. And, and they, they have a lot of establishments that uh, bring people together. I see a lot of that. I also see a more creativity in design um, and more challenging. You know, the more creative designers get, the yeah. more challenging our jobs are. Which on the upholstery side. Yeah, which oh, is wow. a good thing because uh, it, it, it forces us to come up with new manufacturing processes, new ways to, uh, uh, new, new products to use, uh, and all that kind of stuff. So I see creativity being, uh, I mean, look where, where chairs have gone in the last 10 years. I you agree. know what I mean? Like the standard square tubing to, to, to this, right? Tapered steel, um, round, you know. A full upholstery. Flat bar. Sorry, full aluminum. Yeah. We're seeing aluminum, complain. Yeah. I mean, you have aluminum chairs now that just blows yeah. our mind. Yeah, that's true as well. Not just the plain steel. The um, the green side has, have you seen a green and environmental side to your business step in? Is it just the foams? Is it the upholstery, like the fabrics, the vinyls? Or are you seeing the frames and the wood go green as well? Um, What's the environmental it's not, footprint? It's, um, it change at it's, all? Well, it's getting, it's, it's changing. It's not... Um, it's nothing too crazy right okay. now. We, we got uh, calls for uh, FFC plywood, and um, but nothing really, nothing really with with vinyl yet. Um, there's a new product out there. They're using silicone to make vinyl. Uh, really? Yeah, which is apparently better for the environment than than PVC based products. Okay. Um, and it's um, what's the what's the word biodegradable. So that do you think will move into your business? I think. Uh, 
our business is, depends a lot on price. So if the price comes down, it, it, would, ah, it would definitely. So only that way will we see it. Yeah, yeah. I think it would be. Uh, it, it would work out well if the if the price would come down a little bit. Yeah. And speaking of the future, I know you've touched on it before with me. Is where like where the next generation of upholstery shops gonna get their teams from? I know there's a struggle to get technical staff. Mm -hmm. What have you done differently and? How are you surviving the the um, HR challenge, the hands-on, mm. on-deck challenge? Where Keep, are you getting these people? Well, you know, we there was a period of time where we only had foreign workers. Oh wow! And uh, now we actually have no foreign workers. And um, really, you know, yeah, because so locals are okay. Yeah, locals are okay. I mean, we had uh, within the last four years, we probably had two gentlemen on on PRs okay but um, you know upholstery is not taught in anywhere in North America so you can't just go to school for it so that's right that's you, what I remember you telling me you could you could spend time learning or teaching somebody yeah and they could walk out the next day and say this is not for me you know what I mean which used to happen quite a bit before uh, before LMIAs you know were, were uh, we're a big part of the business. You know, it's a tough, it's a, it's a high skill trade. It's tough to learn, and you got to have a lot of patience because you're gonna, you're gonna stitch a cover, it's not gonna fit. You're oh, gonna wow. restitch it, restitch it, restitch it until you get it right. And has high tech stepped in? Like, are we seeing high tech machines, cutting machines? Are we seeing yeah. high tech um, CNC for the booths? Like, what do you? You've gone CNC, right? Yeah, we have CNC. Or how has that made your product? better or more technological advanced or is it just saved in man hours it's saved man hours okay. you know nowadays there's i mean i went to a design show uh, a furniture show and equipment show in china nice and i witnessed a hundred and twenty thousand dollar sewing machine and one machine one machine yes oh, wow. and um and it's just like a, a wood router right you load up the design and it goes in stitches uh, the design wow. for you. So it's, it's advanced, but at the same time, it has room to grow. Okay. Because there's not a, there isn't a machine that can do a 3D stitch, right? It's all it's all flat right now. So so for now, we're stuck with what we have. Yeah, yeah, we're well, stuck with Well, and again, it's but advancing, still, but slow. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, definitely. Very interesting. I would say that in my business, and obviously we have trends and we follow trends, but some things are here to stay. I've been in the business 25 years. Mm -hmm. I don't think the vinyl booth business or perhaps even the chair business has changed a lot it's just changed in styles, styles. and then, so the chair style changes yeah. uh the finish changes but i would say johnny the idea of what a booth looks like has not changed on our drawings for many years no i know there, there's uh you know furniture has been around for centuries and wow. it's not going to go away every every space needs furniture uh everybody needs to sit down eat at a table yeah you know what i mean so yeah it's not going to go uh away and, and by the way, that, that bench that you designed for malt and mortar nice. was actually one of my favorite uh, benches to build. Seriously? Yeah. Because, Why? Because of the, it was very intricate and it was very difficult because you had a design there and you, you wanted it to be a, a one piece cutout of laser cut. And that, and that was, you know, um, I think it was somebody from your office or, or was it you that was saying that they had trouble finding someone to do it? And then yeah, we've I, had I, trouble finding people to do some of the crazy stuff that we whip up. Because, I mean, it's easy for us to draw it. Yeah. But to build it is we need your expertise to put it together, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I, I got the idea to, to get it plasma cut it out. And so no way. And we, plas and we did that, and then we just strung them together with some tubes. And, um, and I still have that uh, bench in the showroom, and it gets a lot of comments. So I will tell you one thing that I dream of building with you, and uh, I don't know if you have built one in Edmonton yet or in Alberta is a backless horseshoe. Oh yeah. Backless so horseshoe. I would okay. like to do one even for my own office here where I could just sit in a horseshoe bench yeah. uh, booth with no back. Yeah. And so the, the illusion there is that you're falling backwards, mm -hmm. but I don't think you would. And I, 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 I struggle with how to do it properly so that it's uh, effective in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. But I like the idea of how it exposes the back wall and it doesn't create that mm -hmm. nook of silence and, and hiding. It's more open, clearly not COVID friendly, yeah. but definitely a different aspect of um, spinning the, the traditional booth design and the traditional horseshoe into something new. Uh, back to the point that I don't see a lot of change in our industry on the upholstery side. And so I continuously like to see new ideas. Um, 
and not to say that that doesn't work. Where I think we've seen changes, and my staff would tell you, is in our periodicals, on the internet, wherever that is, we're seeing an influence of new ideas mm -hmm. come into the business. Uh, what's good or bad is some of the ideas don't hold up. So mm -hmm. I am always interested in new ideas. I see across Edmonton new restaurants opening up, but we quickly find out that it's not a, a Farage product, mm -hmm. B, um, it's not the quality that I would come to expect in a commercial space, and quickly it falls apart. So it was good until the restaurant opened. Yeah. And that's nothing you probably get involved with. You don't yeah. want to no, put I, out I, a product that's just... Yeah, like that's a good point, because going back to what you're saying about where do you see the industry or where would you like it to be, I would like it to be less mass production and more custom. I see. You know what I mean? It's just uh, better quality, more durability, longer lasting. Uh, um, you know, a restaurant would, would benefit more from a longer lasting product. And that's where it would be nice to uh, to get rid of the cookie cutter stuff. Interesting. Yeah. I like that. And then um, when it comes to your BHAG, your big, hairy, audacious goal, uh, if you don't mind sharing with us, what is the goal? What's what what do you want the brand to, to do moving forward out of COVID? Like, where do you see yourself? I know I asked you, so where do you see yourself in 10 years? But as a brand, what else can Farage do to provide our clients with more happiness in their environment and their restaurants? Where else, like, what else do you see your company touching in the next 10 years? Um, I would like to get into office furniture more. Okay. And have our own line of, of office furniture. Um, and, and schools and whatnot. Customized or is that just on a line? Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, custom uh, furniture. Um, I would like, I like the fact that now people use um, furniture for design as okay. well. And they'll use, they'll incorporate it in, in some aspects. It's, it's the focal point of their, of their space. And I would like to see that more. Oh, wonderful. Because uh, it, it, it makes our job a lot more fun. Hmm. To be honest, and you know, I, we, we once did a uh, a restaurant, a centerpiece, a bench uh, with upholstered walls all the way to a ceiling, and the owner called me and it was just yelling like, "He, you made my restaurant. This is the best thing ever," and he went and got lights for it, and it, it was very nice. So I'd like to see that more often. Involved in, in uh, coming out of Farage. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. And if you can let our our viewers know at home, um, we're working on. Uh, a line of furniture, you and I, mm -hmm. where uh, I will bring you what I think is necessary for my clientele. Mm -hmm. uh, a few chairs, a few stools, and uh, you're working on the prototypes, mm -hmm. and uh, we'd like to release that line soon. Yeah. Uh, I think we worked out a name for that, and uh, I guess we have to christen some of these yeah. uh, chair names. Yeah. But uh, we're very excited, and I know everybody at home is excited to see our new chair line, yeah. uh, which will be available through your website. And I think uh, not only will it be fun for my team to spec our own product, mm -hmm. but uh, obviously we'd like to see it uh, flourish for you and have okay. uh, every designer in Canada use uh, what we think will be appropriate chairs and stools for new hospitality environments, restaurants, hotels, casinos. Yeah, no, I'm very excited for that. That's, uh, that's going to be an opportunity. Uh, it's it's uh, I'm very thankful to, to, to do that with you and uh, it'll be some really good furniture 100% wonderful yeah. Well, I want to thank you with that. I want to thank you for coming down uh, Thanks for your time your insight And I think some of your shares on the world of upholstery and custom restaurant furniture uh, Is something something interesting for the end user my clientele and just the general public watching us home. Yeah, thanks for having thanks, me. Man. Thanks, thanks so much. Thank Bye you for now. much